This is pre-calculus concept 33F. We're going to talk about solving some trig equations without your calculator. So one thing you may have noticed is all the problems we've done so far have ended up being answers that were on your unit circles, so the kind of the common angles of pi over 3 and pi over 4, etc. But there certainly doesn't, your answers certainly don't have to be those angles, and um, we're going to look at some problems today where uh, maybe it's not as obvious an answer, and therefore you're going to require um, the need of your calculator. So let's start off with an example. Three examples, actually. Um, sine of x equals negative one-third. So you might look around on your unit circle and realize pretty quickly that that's not uh, one of our special values. And so you might think about um, how to use your calculator to solve this. Um, it turns out that um, the answers are going to be related to, but not necessarily equal to, the inverse sine operation. Right? So what we're going to do is pull out our calculators and type in the inverse sine of negative one-third. All right, so we want to make sure we have our uh, calculator in uh, radian mode, and this is the output that you should see. Sorry about the glare there. So the inverse sine of negative one-third turns out to be uh, negative 0.34, approximately. So hopefully remember when you use this inverse trig function that your answer is going to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And so your answer is basically, you know, somewhere down here in the fourth quadrant. And it's representing it as a negative angle, right? Theta equals negative uh, 0.34 if I round. Now the bad news is that that angle is not on the interval given. And so we have to think about, and this is the work of these problems, um, what that angle would be. Um, and I also have to think about the fact that there's another angle whose sign would also be that. So the good news is that this 0.34 is actually our reference angle. And whatever my answer is, it's going to be that distance away. So I really just have to think about the quadrants. So hopefully it makes sense to you that if I wanted to find the third quadrant angle over here, it's going to be pi plus that 0.34 decimal. Um, and then the fourth quadrant angle um, is actually going to be named by doing 2 pi minus 0.34. Oh, we'll go over these in class, but um, that's the idea. Um, we could obviously round those, or I'd be okay if you left your answers in terms of that. Um, let's look at the next one, the tangent of x equals 10.6. Again, a very familiar, unfamiliar value, so I'm going to pull out my calculator. Okay, if I do inverse tangent of 10.6, I get the uh, angle 1.48 radians. Um, that is a first quadrant answer. Um, my oops, reference angle would be um, 1.48. And the good news is that's one of my answers because um, for this problem, I want an angle whose tangent is positive. Um, I need to think about there is another answer that's in the third quadrant that's the same distance away from the, pos uh, the x-axis. So um, final answers for this one are going to be 1.48 and pi plus 1.48. So the point of these is that the answer your calculator gives you is going to be used to find your answer, but it's not necessarily your answer. So you always have to go back to thinking about um, what quadrant your answers are in and use the answer that your calculator gives you as a reference angle. All right, last one here real quick. If I um, pull up my calculator picture, here, um, I actually get a error message, right? and that's initially surprising, but if you think about what the question is asking, um, give me the angles whose cosine is 2, there is no such angle, so in this case there are no solutions. Alright, let's look at a uh, little bit harder problem with the same concepts. So in this problem it says um, solve this, um, you should recognize that this is kind of in quadratic form. You might spend a few minutes, um, let's actually rewrite this, w squared minus w minus 1. Uh, you might spend a few minutes trying to factor this and find eventually that it's not factorable. And that presents a problem in terms of solving it in a simple way. However, all quadratics have answers. They're just not always nice answers. And so hopefully you can remember the way to solve is going to be plus or minus, oh, sorry, uh, negative b. So that's going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is also 1, minus 4 times a times c, right, all over 
to a. Right, simplify that a little bit and you end up with 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. And if I want the decimal answers for that, uh, I can pull out my calculator and figure those out. Uh, what I get is two decimal answers for that. And if that's what w is equal to, then we know that that's what sine of x is equal to. I'm going to break this into two problems now because I've got two little mini problems to solve. These are clearly not special unit circle values, uh, but rather ones that I have to kind of think about and um, solve with my calculator. Uh, the first part, you should recognize right away there's no solution to that because um, inverse sine of anything bigger than 1 is going to give you an error. Um, if I do inverse sine of um, negative 0.62 on my calculator, um, that's going to give me uh, approximately uh, negative 0.69 and that's a fourth quadrant angle right down here whose reference angle right, is 0.69 and I have to give my answers in kind of the forwards trip around the circle and you should realize that um, for sine I'm going to have a third quadrant answer and a fourth quadrant answer so um, ends up being pi plus 0.69 and 2 pi minus 0.69 and again I'm getting those um, using my reference angle but also thinking about the quadrants that my answers are in so those end up being the two solutions to this all right let's have you try a you try um, this is similar to the last one so you're gonna have to use the quadratic formula Okay, pretty tough one here. You've got a, something in quadratic form you have to solve and get the decimal answers. And then you have to remember that each of those answers is what the cosine of x is equal to. That leads to two problems. Um, the second one in this case has no solution. Um, the first one uh, has a solution that your calculator gives you, which is 2.34, and that ends up being one of my answers. Um, but then I have to think about how to get the third quadrant angle. And a good way to think about it is kind of going backwards, so it's 2 pi minus 2.34. Okay. These are kind of the toughest things to do, but um, again, if you keep in mind the quadrants in which to find your answers, um, that's the biggest thing that will help you with these.